each person brings to the problem, their own background, their own perspectives, their own way of solving problems. And they get to use the person that they uniquely are in science. It's every every kid's dream to be able to play at work. When I was younger, my my dad became diabetic, and uh, and I was curious to know what what this was. And for years, I, I was I was really curious about diabetes and, and studied a lot about it. And uh, when I was in college, I went on a mission trip and decided to do medicine. I thought, oh man, this is fantastic. But then when I graduated from college, I came to Loma Linda, and. Uh, and was given the opportunity to do to research uh, on diabetes again. I was like, oh, wouldn't this, this be fantastic? You know, I'll, I'll be able to do research on something I really like, and then I'll be able to apply it in the clinic. One of the beauties of the PhD is that they give you the freedom to do research on something that you really, really are passionate about. Just knowing that you can actually make a difference uh, in the near future is just enough motivation to get you out of bed every day. A PhD gives you the opportunity to find uh, the root of the problem. You're not just applying knowledge, you're actually creating knowledge, which is, I think, uh, one, of the, one of the greatest tools a, a human can have, you know, being able to, to solve a problem. Eventually, I would like to uh, help my dad by finding something useful here in the lab. I feel like I've learned a lot more in, in two years that I've been here than in the previous 24 years of my life. It's, it's, it's been an amazing experience as far as uh, growing academically and professionally. It, it's pushed me to, to what I thought were my limits as far as uh, learning goes. It's been uh, tremendous. As Dr. Hessinger said, today I'm going to be discussing with you some of the data our lab has involving markers of hypoxia, ischemia, and infants who have necrotizing intracolitis. At first, I was a little nervous because I'm not a Seventh-day Adventist, and I wasn't sure if I'd fit in. And They tell you you have to go to chapel on Wednesdays, and I was like, oh, this is not going to be fun for me. But... I really ended up liking it. I think people are more friendly here. They have sort of that Christian mentality where they'll go out of their way to help you if you need it. And I think that because it's so small and they get to know you, they care more about what you're gonna do afterwards. They keep better track of their students. They are willing to write those recommendation letters that are more personal and not just a general fill in the blank form and sign the name afterwards. I would hope Eventually, for me, I would be able to develop some sort of screening system that would be used in hospitals worldwide to identify babies who have the potential to get sick, and so we could monitor those babies and try to use preventative measures. And I think with the lab I'm in, I have the potential to be able to do that. Well, Megan, her role in the study is to film the baby's response how the baby's eyes close, how the baby's face crunches. So she films that, she processes it, she studies it. That is her role in this specific project. She's involved in many projects. This is just one of the many projects that she's involved in. Although her PhD is on another project, she's like involved in everything I do. Because I want her to see the full length of things she can do that's possible. So you can see how the red blood cells go down to the bottom, and then what we're interested in is this top layer, which is clear. The fact that we go to the hospital and we see the babies and we collect samples every day and we have access to the medical records, I think it makes it my research very possible. But I think for me personally, the stress of being a doctor was not something I would want in my life. And with research, 
you can kind of make your own hours and if things don't go correctly, yes, it is stressful and you have to come in at crazy hours of the night to fix it, but once you get things going correctly, it's exciting and you want to be there and you're willing to put in those extra hours and for me, that's that's enough. I'm sure to save lives would be something, a great experience, but I'd prefer to do it my way by helping the MDs instead of actually being one. Well, I, I am on a really circuitous way to become a doctor, getting a PhD first, but uh, that was my initial want, to work with people and, uh, and help people, put my hands on people, help to heal people. I never thought of myself as a researcher until maybe recently. Uh, in undergraduate, I only did maybe three months or so of, of research. Wasn't really interested in it, and it was really just to pad my resume. But coming in here, it really opened my eyes to how much research is interesting. If you see a connection there that no one has, you know, that's, that's your creation, pretty much. Um, it's, you've discovered it. That's a really good feeling um, to, to see those connections, and you do. Even if you don't find the, um, you know, the holy grail of treatments for stroke, you, on a regular basis, will find connections that tend to kind of blow your mind a bit. I have a memory of when I was in undergraduate struggling with schoolwork and sitting down with my mother, and she asked me the question, what do you want to do with your life? And I, I came up with an answer that was kind of just, I want to change something that needs changing in medicine. I always just wanted to be a physician, and I never really thought I'd do research. However, after college, uh, trying to find some direction, trying to find some um, credentials to get into a good medical school, uh, I spoke with alumnus of uh, Loma Linda. He told me about Loma Linda and the fact that there's research being done here. And after a tour of the neuroscience department, I, I was hooked. Doing this neuroscience research, this translational research, trying to translate laboratory findings into the clinic, I think it's really preparing me to be a physician scientist. I, I wanted to have an impact on the world. And I think that this research degree, and hopefully then medical degree that I'll be getting, is absolutely going to help me do that. Basically, I'm a chemist. I have a bachelor degree and a master degree in chemistry. I teach organic chemistry in the uh, University of Puerto Rico for six years. It's a great experience. It's a great experience. I love it. <laughs> I love to teach. And right now I have been mentor for two students. And it's really good because it helps you to grow as a professional, to grow as a student, to grow as a person. Also, some of them, they don't have no one here in, in, in in California, there by themselves, as I, I am here by myself, and and it's good, you know, to have also a friend that that could help you, and maybe during the week outside from the research lab, you know, that always there to help you. That that they are right, not right now taking the class that you took before, and you can tell them, hey, you can study like this or emphasize on this one. So it is a good experience for us to like mentor other students. Right now I'm working in the perinatal center of biology and we have quality mentors, quality PIs. With the mentors, the PIs, I know they're very happy when you go to their office, you know, and bother them a little bit, you know. And I think that's very important as graduate students um, to have that source of information and, and be available for us anytime. And I think here in La Melinda, you can find that in every research lab uh, with every PI, every mentor. My PI is basically always available, and I like that. The funny thing is that I open the door of my lab, and in front is the door of his office, and always open, you know. And you can touch, and you say, come in, and you're there with him. And also, they, they respect you as a student, as a person and try to make you part of, of the big family. And for me, that is important because it's gonna be like four or five or six year 
to be alone is not good, you know. So you need that those person to be by your side in every single step. And and I found that here, you know, that I'm not alone. I have different professors from my center, from other centers, that they always watch you and 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 take care of you and, and anything you need. The reason why I chose the basic sciences is because I chose the medical program here. I think I was 17 years old when I learned about Loma Linda. There's a lady at church told me about the school and I learned about the mission and I saw how it fit in with my reason of pursuing medicine. When I learned about the combined degree program where you can obtain both the medical degree as well as a doctorate, I knew that this was it. You know, I knew I wanted to come here for med school, but the fact that they had that program that allowed me to, you know, kind of feed into my curiosity for science as well as my aspiration to become a physician. I've always been the type to just not accept it as, you know, that it can't go any further or we just don't know. I've, I've never accepted that. I think my high school biology class, a professor, I don't know what she was discussing, but I remember she's like, well, we just don't know what happens beyond that. And I asked her why. What Loma Linda provides is an environment where you can think on your own two feet. It provides you with the ability to become an investigator, to really ask the question, why? You know, why have we accepted this as just normal knowledge? Why are we not asking questions? Well, how does this happen? Why does it happen that way? I love the fact that you push the envelope. You're no longer just accepting it as, well, we don't have any other drugs available. That's just how it is. You're going to be impaired, neurologically impaired for the rest of your life. I like the fact that we don't accept that as just standard. We want to go beyond that. Being a student here at Loma Linda has changed me for the better. It has strengthened me spiritually and it has really taught me how to be professional, how to think professionally, how to think critically, how to interact with my peers, and it fit in with my end all objective, which is to become a competitive investigator that is able to consistently yield results and be relevant in my scientific community in my area of expertise. What this program is also enabling me to obtain is a medical degree and a doctorate degree. That is something that is unheard of for a girl like me, unheard of for a girl of my socioeconomic background. And so with all these you know, scientific and medical ambitions that I may possess, that a lot of these students here possess, what this program does is it allows me to tell a story, a story that would otherwise have never occur. It's allowing me to reach a dream that was once considered by people in my community as an impossible feat for someone like me. And I hope that the world can be a better place by just changing, even if just one person can benefit from the fact that I'm a medical doctor and my expertise can yield benefits to not just clinical research, but to someone from a neighborhood who thinks that he's unheard, someone from a neighborhood who thinks that he can't be a scientist. If you're curious, you can't be a scientist. And so this program really enables me to, I guess, to be someone. And that is something 10 years ago I thought would have never happened to someone like me.